thank you for all the blessings you have given to us. We thank you for those who serve Hazel Park with great devotion. Thank you for our mayor, these city council members, the city administrative staff, our brave police and firefighters. We thank you for the progress that you are blessing this city with, for new businesses, new jobs, as well as new people moving in. We thank you for the new optimism in Hazel Park. We ask your blessings on these proceedings tonight. May you give wisdom and direction to all discussions. May all decisions be according to your will. For all that you do, we'll give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of agenda. So move, Mayor. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Um, Mr. Pogacher, the resolutions. Start me a second. Thank you. Yeah. Is uh, the family of James Carmius here? Can you come to the podium, please? City of Hazel Park Resolution 09-024-15 in memory of James S. Scarmius. Whereas James Scarmius, devoted husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather, passed away peacefully at his home on September 22nd at the age of 84, and is survived by his wife of 66 years, Pauline, two sons, William and Kenneth, four grandchildren, seven, and seven great-grandchildren. And whereas, Immensely committed to the city of Hazel Park, Mr. Scarmius served as city councilman from 1969 to 1970, again from 1977 to 1985, and for four years as mayor pro tem from 1982 to 1985. And whereas, James Scarmius was no less devoted to the community at large, having been a longtime member of the Kiwanis Club, a den leader for the Boy Scouts of America, as well as a youth football and little league coach in addition to working as a court officer in the 43rd District Court until 1992. And whereas, as a major proponent of the Hazel Park Raceway, James Scarmius worked there intermittently for 56 years, eventually becoming general manager before retiring to spend more time with his family and to enjoy his favorite hobby of coin collecting. And whereas, James Scarmius was a true gentleman and a man of his word, who had the respect and admiration of generations of Hazel Park residents. Now therefore, be it resolved, on this 28th day of September, 2015, as mayor and council for the city of Hazel Park to hereby recognize the enormous contributions of James Scarmius, whose life served as a testament to the indomitable spirit of the city of Hazel Park, which he loved. We convey our deepest sympathies to his family and many friends. He will not be forgotten. I'm sorry my mother, Pauline, couldn't be here this evening. Uh, she wanted to, but she just couldn't make it. Um, but on behalf of my family uh, and all of us, and our extended family and our friends that we've known so dear in Hazel Park, I want to thank everybody for this resolution. Madam Mayor and Council, it means a lot to my family. It really does. And Dad spent uh, time, as you folks all are sitting there, and uh, it stays with you. I can tell you, my dad was 84 and still reminds me of the, some of the battles that he has when you guys are up there. So, and he reminds me a lot of when dad was doing this, uh, Mayor uh, well, in Hazel Park was a little bit different at that time, but I do recall that Johnson was in the White House uh, in the early parts of it going toward Nixon. So this is going back, but dad used to always talk that when 
Johnson wrote his uh, kind of memoirs near the end, uh, he talked about when the burdens of the presidency got really rough. He looked back and he said, well, I guess it could be worse. I guess I could be a mayor. And uh, so the, my dad knew that and we talked about that a lot. So again, I just wanted to thank the Madam Mayor and Consul again on behalf of my family for this wonderful honor and remembrance of my dad. Thank you all very much. We'll read Romeo's into the record. Uh, a resolution honoring Romeo Bazinet. Whereas local entrepreneur Romeo Bazinet has long been a prominent figure in the community, having been born and raised in Hazel Park and currently owning Romeo and Juliet Furniture, a number of residential properties, and whereas Romeo Bazinet currently serves the citizens of Hazel Park as a member of the Downtown Development Authority, which encourages revitalization of the Central Business District, and whereas Romeo Bazinet has a history of doing charitable work in Hazel Park, including donations to the Hazel Park School District by funding recreational and educational programs. And whereas Romeo Bazinet has supplemented past gifts to our community, including chairs and couches for the fire department, office chairs for the police department, an office desk for the city attorney, a whiteboard for the city's recreation center, and various other office equipment and supplies that have made Hazel Park municipal buildings more ergonomic. And now, therefore, be it resolved, the Mayor and Council of the City of Hazel Park to hereby recognize Romeo Bazinet for his continued contribution to the welfare of citizens and municipal employees, as well as his tireless devotion to the community as a whole. Then on this day of October 13th, we will get this to Romeo. Perhaps he will show up uh, next week uh, or at the next council meeting, and we'll present it to him. Uh, Madam Mayor, I just want to say again, uh, Jim Scaramius, uh, what a great guy. When I was much younger and just started getting involved in the city of Hazel Park, uh, uh, Jim was always available. He was someone who I could uh, ask questions, and he would always take the time to listen to me and answer those questions. Uh, he never treated me like I was bugging him or like I was uh, a pain. He was simply there and always willing to answer questions and help. Uh, he was really one of the true gentlemen uh, that have served uh, the city of Hazel Park. So we will be missed. Mayor Parisi. Yes. I too want to express uh, my admiration for Jim Scarmius. Uh, a better hearted person you will never meet, and a finer gentleman you will never know. And I understand how his family. We'll miss him, but fear not, he's still with us. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, civic announcements, Bob, we're into civic announcements. Um, Kirk Chester, come to the podium. Name and address. Kirk Chester at 340 East Mountain in Hayes Park. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, I want to talk to you about the elections coming up here uh, in November and how important they are for this city. Um, with, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, elections coming up in the city and, um, and how important they are uh, with uh, what's, what's going on in the city. Uh, I would suggest to, in, to tell everybody to vote for their conscience and to vote each one of these gentlemen and in, back in to the uh, back into the uh, council again. Um, I've know, started to know these gentlemen very well. I'm starting to call them my friends. Uh, the mayor, they're all doing very well for this city and the future of this city. Um, I can remember a time when I first came into the city and how much the, the uh, city council was such in chaos. Um, but now they're running on all eight cylinders. Um, I see a better future for the city with the council that's on board here. 
Um, I wouldn't change a thing um, with the, uh, how the city is run. This, the city is in good hands with Mr. Keaton, Mr. Lucero, Jim Parigi, Mr. Webb, and Mr. Selman, and Jenna Drum, and Ed Klobuchar. They're all running on, like I said, eight cylinders. They're, they're, they all got the same, same drive to see what the future of the city is. Uh, I wouldn't be coming up here just a uh, little smoke. I know these guys. These guys are true to what they say. They, they know what the future of the city holds. They've lived in the city. They've grown up in the city. And um, I would say on, in November to vote, re-vote these, these people in because it's important to our city. You know, we've been through two big millage elections in the, this past year. It wasn't easy for this city. And, well, and I can tell you, it wasn't easy for this council to do, to, to do what they did, but they did it because they see in the future of the city. And that's what I love about these, these gentlemen and, and our beautiful mayor. Um, so, like I said, it's just, it's a no-win situation. It's a win-win situation with, these, uh, with this council. This council's a great council. They're great people. They've got a heart and desire for this city. They see the future for the city, and I really, really stress to all the voters out there to vote these guys in. So that's all I have to say. And thanks for doing a great job, guys. Thank you, Kurt. years ago or over the past few years, the city's almost went into bankruptcy, emergency manager. Um, I, the office where I work is, has an emergency manager. I withhold the name of the city. Um, the roads are horrible. You think Cousins was bad or West End was bad. Those roads aren't getting fixed anytime soon. They have no police department. You see the state police every once in a while. Another city that we were working in, again, emergency manager, um, basically bankruptcy. We went to pull a, bu a building permit to do some work, found out they don't even have a building department. <coughs> it's gone. You have to apply through the state. So I've, over the past several years, I've watched this council. I've paid attention to what's going on in the city and we have a lot of great things going on, and it's all in part by the citizens and the council working hard, working together. We have the administration that's always trying to come up with new ideas, bringing new businesses into the city. And I just think that everybody needs to remember that sometimes change is good, but sometimes if it's not broke, don't fix it. We got a lot of good things happening. We have a lot of good businesses in the city that have uh, weathered through the storm. And I, you know, I remind everybody to please support those businesses. It's very important. Um, but more than importantly than anything, get out and vote. And if you think that just because your candidate is popular or whatever, they're automatically going to get reelected or elected, um, think again, because it's important that everybody get out and vote. Every vote counts, and so I just want to remind everybody to get out and vote, and think about how great our little town is so far, and what's been done, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Beth Allen, 305 West Milton. Um, I have civic announcement and call to audience. Can I piggyback those? Or do you want me to sit down and come back up? Okay. Um, first would be a civic announcement. Our next community crime watch meeting is going to be Tuesday, October 20th, 7 p.m. at Hazel Park High School. Our last meeting um, 
Orlando, our new canine, which thanks to Sporza passing and the, the police millage, we have a canine full time now. And uh, Lando was able to demonstrate some things. And two highlights were the reward tennis ball got away from the handler at one point and landed in a young woman's lap. And all the men went, <laughs> and, and uh, Lisa didn't move until that ball popped loose and Lando got it. And the second thing was a really funny when they did a narcotics find, they hid some, some narcotics in the bookshelf, and everybody says, you guys better find that stuff and take it out of there. Every kid's gonna wanna go to the media center every day. <laughs> so, so that would be my civic announcement. I hope to see everybody on uh, Tuesday, October 20th, 7 p.m. at the high school, and our Hazel Park firefighters will be there. I don't know what they're talking about, but they will have something interesting to sh share. And uh, my, my call to audience, I want to piggyback what my fellow neighbors have said about the election. And I, I don't have any prepared remarks, so just bear with me on this. You guys ran unchallenged two years ago, and there's a reason for that. This town was just nanoseconds away from falling into receivership. Incredibly difficult decisions were made, sacrifices were made. At that time, nobody stepped forward with anything better to offer. And now, all of a sudden, we are on the cusp of so many fantastic things. And it's hard not to be excited when you make the news for things like the pumpkin fairy. How cool is that? When Channel 7 show up, because something <clears throat> neat is happening. And I don't think that everybody realizes that kind of thing has been going on in this community. This is a, such a, a small town, hometown, spirited town. And I love it. Um, and. Sometimes people say things, they, they'll bring up things that you can't respond to. Social media is, is a double-edged sword here sometimes. But things like they'll say, what are we doing with the ice arena? Not realizing that you guys, some of you ran because of that mess getting in there. And the decisions you've made since inheriting that mess have kept us above water. And even there was a plan B, I had to think if s'mores I had not passed, there was a backup plan to try and figure out what to do to make sure we could pay that mortgage first. So there's a lot of things. Um, I guess I want to just let you know you each have my support, my family's support, most of my neighbors' support for a couple of big reasons. Local politics, you guys, I can get more accomplished here. I, if my state rep, I don't they know how to answer the phone without somebody doing it for them. But if I need something answered or I have a problem to address, each and every one of you is hands-on, and you have been for years. Prior to running for office, you were all extremely involved in the community, and even in between terms, have remained involved in the community. And um, there, there was something said, somebody pulled a FOIA request, which is a freedom of information, on your voting record since you've been elected. And I thought, hey, I wonder what everybody's voting record has been this whole time that you've been here. So I filed a fancy little FOIA request, Freedom of Information. I just pulled back re voting records for all of you and your opponents for the past six years, and uh, it was pretty stunning. <laughs> There's a lot of opportunities to vote. Now some, if you're not voting in a Democratic or Republican primary, you're gonna have a few less opportunities, but um, <laughs> I, I just found this stunning. In the past six years, it looks like there were about 48 opportunities to vote. Councilman Keaton, you, sir, voted 46. Councilman LeCuro, 38. We know which party you belong to. <laughs> Mayor Parisi, 46. Councilman Webb, and I don't want to hear about, you didn't have a, nobody to vote for in that school board election. Uh, 41, two pages worth. And here's where it gets interesting. Oh wait, Councilman Selman, I almost forgot you. 48, perfect record. This is where it gets interesting. Two opponents that are running for office this term that uh, basically I feel landed on planet Earth sometime around March. Never knew who they were, never know where they came from. Um, Miss Aubrey voted a total of 20 times. Miss Sullivan, seven. And most important, she did not even bother to come out for the s'mores of vote. And I find that very, oh, I don't have a word for it. <laughs> Somebody who wants to represent me, I feel should be representing the entire community and actually care enough to come out and vote and be involved in the community as a volunteer in this community. That's it. Thank you.
Davis. <coughs> Colin Davis. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to speak on the house? <laughs> Colin, do you want to speak on the house? Do you want to speak on the house that's being torn down? Yeah. No. Okay. okay. That's, there's a different you time. Put it up yeah. there, though. Okay. We'll call you. Yeah. We'll get you. Thank you. Uh, any more civic announcements? Mayor? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have trunk and treat over at Tusky Park at Halloween evening. I think we can all find our nephews, nieces, grandkids, bring them over, your kids. And let's have fun. It's going to be a great night. Hopefully, we can keep the weather off to, to the, you know, keep the rain away and let the kids enjoy a nice evening safely. Uh, I'd like to also thank the fire department. It was a great opportunity. I was over there Sunday for the kids to have the open house, and it was a wonderful time. The helicopter was impressive. Again, next year, if you missed it this year, do it next year because it's something you need to take the kids to. Let the little ones really enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Any more civic announcements? <clears throat> Any more civic announcements? Having none, close civic announcement. Okay. Public comments. Any public comments? Anybody? Public comments? She's coming. Okay. She's in the back. Okay, there she is. Good evening, Mayor and Council and City Manager. My name is Peggy Burleson. I live at 23109 Hardy, Hazel Park. I have been here for four years. Our city is a great city. It has always been a family. And last Sunday when the fire department had their open house, I would like to say congratulations, Chief Story and your firemen for putting on a great uh, open house. It was great to see that the Eagles was there in participation. The Hazel Park Lions Club was there for uh, vision screening with our Project uh, Kids site. Uh, we screened 50 residents, and we, have, we had about 10 referrals. So it was a great day, opportunity, and everything that was there with the helicopter, the burning of the car, and the smoke, it was really fantastic. It was great to see each one of you there at the uh, open house. Mm -hmm. uh, there was so many residents that came through. Uh, I am just so proud of being a Hazel Parker. And I thank all of you. I thank the fire chief. I thank our police chief everyone in our city, including our residents, always work together, and we are, and always have been, and we will keep being one happy family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any more public comments? Having none? Close. Madam Mayor, before you do the uh, consent agenda, I want to recognize Michelle Furian from Paws. We're going to give her a resolution at our next meeting. I think we had a snafu. I want to thank you for your efforts and your wonderful donation of the floor for our animal shelter. Thank you so very much. Please brave the weather and come back next month for your resolution. I apologize for the, mis uh, the mistaken dates, but I want to thank you for your outstanding efforts, and I want to thank uh, all of those people who volunteered and participated in that whole process. There are too many names to list, but uh, again, uh, this was a great community effort, and thank you all so very much. So uh, we'll try to get, uh, I'll try to get a list of the names and read them at the next uh, uh, meeting. But it was just, uh, again, it's phenomenal. We wouldn't have been able to do that without your outstanding donations. So thank you, thank you so much. If you haven't seen it, it's relatively incredible over there. What a difference. Mm -hmm. Tip. Men name? Yes. Men name? I know it's not a public announcement, but um, you wanted an update with regard to the home last week uh, from the attorney uh, who represented the bank. We gave them the opportunity to make the repairs. Uh, we acquired them for close to five thousand dollars bond, cash bond, which they did. They signed the affidavit and intent to make the repairs. 
Um, the recommendation was for 120 days to have the repairs completed. They agreed to it. Uh, they've already pulled their, build, their uh, electrical and plumbing permits and have already started. So that was really good news. Yeah. Good. Looks like we're going to have another viable house. Good. Great. Good. 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 Mayor Parisi. Yes. Uh, I would just like to uh, uh, announce that uh, appearing in good health and gracing us with his presence, and we welcome him, uh, former Mayor Jack Lloyd. Please stand yes. and be recognized. <laughs> Madam Mayor, the uh, administration respectfully requests approval of the uh, administrative report number one with PICO contracting for restriping in the amount of $13,113. So moved, Mayor. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Number two, approve intergovernmental agreement Woodward Neighborhood Bicycle Route. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Assistant City Manager slash Community Development Director slash Code Enforcement Supervisor slash Deputy City Attorney slash uh, whatever else I can assign him to do. Jeffrey Campbell is here to discuss this. What this is is an uh, uh, intergovernmental uh, agreement uh, establishing uh, a bike route. So uh, if you have any questions, Mr. Campbell, he is here. The administration recommends approval of this resolution. Basically, if you haven't, I think I included the bike route in the a map of the bike route. It's through six or seven or five or six communities. I believe it's through Oak Park, Berkeley, Huntington Woods. Uh, there's sort of a detour esque thing through Pleasant Ridge, Ferndale, and it ends in Hazel Park along Woodward Heights. And all that's required of us, really, for this bike route is we would be paying, I think our co cost coverage is the least, but it's through the Simcog TAP grant. Uh, I think it's important not only for us to be a part of this bike route, but it also helps us in the future when we want to apply for any Simcog right. TAP grants as well. Basically, all we're doing is painting the little guys on the, on the street where they're already legally allowed to go, and we would be paying for three signs, and we can include additional markers like 0.5 miles to City Hall, things of that nature, 0.2 miles to Green Acres Park or the Community Rec Center, things of that nature. I think it's a great thing to be a part of. Um, Ferndale is putting this together. The only thing that you should know is that the $1,600 is a cost estimate. If it goes over, we have to cover it. But since really our cost is $600, the other cost is 1000 for engineering. Even if it doubled, it'd be <laughs> 1200 So I doubt that it's going to They don't anticipate any really cost overages, especially for just painting guys on the road. <laughs> Thank you. Mayor? Yes. Make a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement with, with the uh, bike route. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. I'm going. I'm not. <laughs> Number three. Approve Oakland County Brownfield Consortium and Resolution. Do you want to go ahead and take this? Yeah. I think this has been before you for, uh, I think, on three different occasions. Um, Basically what this is, is Oakland County brings about eight, count, eight communities together to apply for a consortium um, through the US EPA for a grant to conduct uh, phase one and phase two environmental assessments of brownfield property. We've done this before. Um, I'll speak to it or uh, the city manager will speak to it a little later. Uh, the last bit of funds we used uh, to uh, help bring in what is possibly the biggest uh, development in Hazel Park history and in Oakland County in the last two to three years. 
So uh, it's been money well spent. Um, and I think we previously used it even, the, the other part of it, the small part of it that didn't go to that project went to uh, Cellarments actually, which will be opening up uh, this fr Saturday. So uh, they both went to viable projects that proved uh, worthy uh, of the money spent. And I think they're asking for a little more money this year. And we have no problem. We still have um, uh, some buildings that, that might need, you know, just phase one, phase two assessments even if they seem perfectly viable, it, uh, it won't hurt. And uh, my, in my experience, the companies that have been approved uh, through Oakland County uh, have been very reliable, good, and uh, one of them is our former own PM Environmental. Um, but uh, they've done good work, and I think it's been a great a group to be a part of. Thank you. And it cost us nothing. Mayor Priest. Yes. I move that we uh, approve the letter to remain part of the Oakland County Brownfield Consortium. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> Number four, approve the used garbage truck from Tringali Sanitation. Madam Mayor, uh, the administration respectfully requests approval for the purchase of a used garbage truck from Tagali Sanitation for $55,000. Uh, the truck is a 2006 International with 35,585 miles. Uh, we'll break it up into 12 monthly payments. We need to do this because our other uh, garbage truck, and we do have one, it's a 1992 Ford. It's got over 170,000 miles on it. We've had to put approximately $49,000 in repairs into it uh, in the past few years, so I think it's uh, no longer cost effective for us to Main, try to maintain uh, that aging piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. Mr. Duberg is here if you have questions. Madam Mayor. Yes. Could you uh, just give us a thumbnail explanation of why we need a garbage truck if we have a consortium Tringali that picks up all our garbage? Um, primarily, there's about 40 cans on John Iron Nine Mile that we pick up. We also pick up all the parks. All the parks have trash cans. And then during grass cutting season, that truck is utilized almost every day on work orders. <coughs> I mean, literally tons of trash are cleaned up in yards. It's used on overtime. And then, you know, the flood, I tried to break it. <laughs> so, I mean, we really do need a garbage So truck. Tringali does the uh, residential garbage and we, uh, we have a lot of stuff to pick up ourselves. That's correct. Thank you. Mayor Parisi? Yes. I move that we approve the purchase of the used garbage truck from Tringali Sanitation for $55,000. A Support. question after the motion. Support. Um, the truck that we have now, will we scrap that? No, uh, my... Uh, Intentions are uh, to spruce it up a little bit and try to get us about half of what we paid for it. I'd like to get $10,000. So. Thank can. you. So if anybody's looking for a garbage truck. Yeah. <laughs> that nice one. collector's item that you've always wanted. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's 24211 Cousins. <laughs> Speaking of that, when are we going to reopen the street? Um, I'm hoping the end of this week. Right. And tomorrow they will be milling West End. Yay! Wonderful. <laughs> We're good. Um, Motions are good. Uh, yeah, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Number five, move Kennedy Park replacement playground equipment. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, this one uh, obviously is within my spending limit. I could have done it myself. But I wanted to bring it before council for your approval. We have received uh, an insurance check. We were replacing the slide at Kennedy Park that was uh, damaged and vandalized. So the kids over there in that area will have a new slide. I request your approval on this. And uh, you know, I, I have some good news for you as well after you approve this. So move. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. In fact, I'll save my good news to New business. Okay. Uh, number six, 
approved TCO 543 section 11 John R. Crosswalk. Uh, Madam Mayor, Jeff Campbell's here if you need additional information on this, but we're seeking to create uh, a crosswalk uh, between Woodward Heights and Nine Mile uh, near the old CVS building to facilitate walkability and uh, uh, ease of crossing the street to get to Mabel Gray and uh, what we assume will be one more really cool restaurant as well, Mr. Campbell. That is correct. Um, we just want ease of access for uh, pedestrians to cross uh, from one, and it goes right just north of Mabel Gray, and the other proposed eatery will be just north of that, so it seems like a perfect place for a crosswalk, and we checked with MDOT standards, and we checked with our engineers at Norwalk and Frouse to make sure we were meeting those MDOT standards. Um, each crosswalk, which is six feet wide, and we'll have 80 a compliant curbs on each side. We'll also have signs in front. Um, it'll have one of the signs in the middle too um, that hopefully our snow plows only take out maybe once a year. And then uh, signs visually in front on each direction so that people are aware that there is a crosswalk. Mayor Preece. Yes. Question for the planning director. Uh, this would be much like the crosswalks in Royal Oak on Washington and Maine that are mid-block. Correct. There's even one north of uh, Maine as well by the whatever that old car dealership was by the Hamlin Trizard. Club area that is very similar to the one we're proposing. Here. Okay. Mayor Parisi. Yes. Uh, move to approve the traffic control order number 543 section 11 Roman numeral 11 for the crosswalk on John R. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, boards and commissions? None? No, no action okay. tonight. Okay. And we're still looking at the tabled items. Mayor? Yes. I'd like to uh, ask that we take the table item off 1245 East State Mile Road off the agenda for, for to send back to administration. Well, we got to make a motion to take it off the off, off the table off the table. That's for removing from the table. Yes, mm -hmm. Madam uh, Mayor. Yes, we have. Uh, I'd like to ask Jeff Campbell. Do we have an update on that? I mean, he is getting there slowly but surely. But I I'm I'm with you. We might end yeah. up tabling it again. Uh, there's still a warrant for him, but at the same no, actually I believe you checked it out. There's not a warrant. Um, okay. But basically, he is making progress. I'm checking with him on a weekly basis to make sure he's keeping the site clean. There will be an additional screening there as well. Um, if there isn't already, I believe it's supposed to be this week. Um, but it's basically to make sure that stuff isn't being dumped in the middle of the parking lot and strewn all over the place, and that the dumpsters look cleaner, and that stuff is not, um, how do I put this? Uh, going over the walls or whatnot, like a, a what was that movie? A big blank spider. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically a, a cinematic classic, <laughs> yeah. cult B classic. Uh, yeah, so I, I I have no problem removing it, but he is working on. He is getting there, and I am meeting with him on at least a biweekly basis. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to refer this back to the administration until they have the full compliance of this site back in front of us. Support. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Any new business? Any new business? Um, you know what, Madam Mayor, I want to say uh, I think we've got some good news for you with respect to new business because. Uh, uh, our recreation director, Serene Papakian, obviously you're familiar with the fact that we have a GoFundMe account for a new piece of play equipment uh, for Scout Park. Well, I got a call from one of our local businessmen, uh, Sam Haddad, who owns Capital Sales. And Sam said, how much does this thing cost? He said, I want to pay the rest of it. Wow. 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 So... Serene and I will be uh, meeting with him hopefully this week to uh, solidify that and uh, hopefully get that ordered. So, uh, again, uh, it's uh, uh, great when someone steps forward like that to be part of the community and makes a donation like that. Wow. 
That is amazing. Yes. Question. Mayor Preach. Yes. Uh, what would be the amount that he would be donating approximately? Anyway? We'll have to total that up because there are other donations that have come in. <clears throat> okay, but so. ballpark. Ballpark ten thousand. God bless him. He said, "I want to buy it." So there you go. Wow. Okay. That is good news. Good news everywhere. Oh <laughs> my. <laughs> Um, and also, you know what, since we're talking about new business, mm -hmm. uh, again, if we can get it in in time this month, we will. Right now, we're going to be sending this through the uh, Downtown Development Authority and the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. It looks like we are going to bring the biggest development, development in Oakland County this year to Hazel Park on the north parking lot of the Hazel Park Raceway. Five hundred and 73,000 square feet of light industrial and distribution that will create 300 plus new jobs. So, we're going to bring it back to you. We will be asking as part of this consideration for employment of Hazel Park residents. Not everybody will be a Hazel Park resident, but we would like them to be considered. That was awesome. Good news everywhere. Yes, yeah. It's awesome. Really good. Yes. This just didn't come about. This we've been working on this. The administration's <laughs> been working on this for a while, and uh, it, it's kind of come to fruition the last uh, month or so with the solidification of the application that we put through to the MDQ, and they've sent back the, the forms, and we're just waiting for the proper forms to come in, in the next couple of weeks. And again, this, this is us working with the owners of the track and the investors over at Ashley Capital. You're correct, uh, Councilman. This whole economic development strategy, it simply didn't fall from the right. sky. This is a result, a lot of hard work that we've all put in right. over the past year to really transform the city of Hazel Park. As you all know, after the housing market crashed, right. what happened? The financial market seized right. and nobody could get credit. Well, now those markets have opened up again and we needed to position ourselves to be able to take advantage of those investment opportunities and I think that you see that our strategy is bearing fruit because not only do we have Mabel Gray, not only do we have Sullivan, well, not only do we have Studio 238, okay, we're bringing the largest redevelopment project and, in Oakland County. And the, our marketing has worked. We tried marketing before the last you know, Bunda County was bad and now we've tried it again knowing the economy, the financial part of the economy was getting better. And now we have the entrepreneurs and uh, big corporations coming this way looking at us. And we have other, other interested parties looking around the town for other investments as well. And it's paying off. Hard work does pay off. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. we weathered the storm and now it's time to uh, bear fruit. to a show cause hearing. Oh. Anybody representing um, 326 West Harry? Anybody representing 326 West Harry? Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, after you close the public discussion, the administration uh, recommends following the hearing officer's order to demolish the structure in 21 days. <laughs> no, we get open public. Okay. Open public. We do have a note here that there's no service. Pardon? No service. Yes, yes. So we can't get Okay, we cannot. Okay, no service. Okay. 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 Well, what do we do now? Refer it back to the administration. I didn't okay. see that note. Where's that footnote? Please. No, she just knows that because she no, didn't no, give us a Yeah. Is it on there? Let me see. Okay. All right. And light print. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Mayor, make a motion to refer 326 West Harry back to the administration. Okay. The Discussion. All right. Uh, what are our options under those circumstances? Oh, we'll reserve her for the next show cause hearing. What happened is, is she has failed to show up for a lot of hearings even when she's been served. She got this property, as you, as you know from the history that's been mm -hmm. given to you, how she's got it. 
But I also found out that she only filed a transfer affidavit on the vacant lot that was west of this address. She has not even filed a transfer affidavit for this property. So it has not been listed in her name. Okay. And nothing's been done. The taxes are delinquent for many years. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have um, anybody representing uh, 416 East Milton. Come on up. Now you? Okay. 416 East Milton. Anybody here representing? Open for public discussion. Open for public discussion. Okay. Close. Here. Madam Mayor, since no one wishes to speak, uh, the administration recommends uh, demolition of this structure within 21 days. So move, Mayor. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Number three, 1106 East Maxwell. Oh, Anybody representing? Mayor Parisi, I'm sorry. Yeah. On 416 East Milton. Uh, yes. There are a huge number of junk trees on that property. Mulberries that are mm -hmm. 8, 12 inches uh, in diameter. Uh, can we make sure that all of the trees are included? I've got that. Thank you. Number 3, 1106 East Maxwell. Anybody representing? Anybody representing? Okay. This is owned by Oakland County now as a result of a tax foreclosure. If no one wishes to speak on public. Madam Mayor, the administration recommends uh, demolition of this home. So moved. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I had a question. Sure. Uh, you know, and I've said this time and time again, is there any way that we can uh, motivate the county or somehow work with the county? Be there today, and of course there's a big auction sign up there. So now we're going to get somebody to buy this property after we've already uh, approved demolition on it, and the county's not even going to tell them about it. They do actually tell them. We, we, we have had a meeting with them. We, what we do is we take all this information, we file it with the county, and when they have the auction, they are given that information out. Okay. So, and, uh, so, we, we don't, we're not yeah. going to have the problems we had had. By statute, they okay. have to place Good. the signs. I mean, sometimes we, you know, we're going to demo them, we take the signs down because we, we've already ordered demolition, and we have demolition ordered. Okay. But uh, by statute, they have to place those signs. And again, the old tax reversion situation is a mess, but like I said, what aspect <clears throat> of municipal finance is a mess. No, no, no. It, it's, you know, I, like I said, I had mentioned that before, and as long as we had that problem yep. solved, I mean, I thought it was pretty poor on the county's part not to tell these people who are, I understand it's their job to, to do their own research, but. Uh, we make sure we send yeah, it up and down. We send Good. a list of everything that's wrong with the property, whether it's going to be already demolished or have to be repaired, so that these buyers know what's going on. Good. Thanks. It goes on a slide. When they put up a slide of the property, and it'll say at the bottom, on demo list, potential demo, order demoed, based on where we're at in the process. Good. All right. Now we're on 4, 116 East Milton. This is another property that's owned by Oakland County as a result of a tax foreclosure. Okay. Open public discussion. Anyone want to speak on this? Yep. Uh, I'm a Hazel Park resident, Colin Davis. Uh, state your name. Name Colin and address. Oh, the microphone. The microphone. Oh. Is it on? Okay. Uh, yeah. Colin for, Davis. This for the TV. Uh, I 
I'm a resident here and I've already gotten a couple of houses here which are fixed up, so I'm a taxpayer. Uh, I got Mr. Pinch's um, uh, inspections on this property and I didn't think it's that far down where it needs to be demolished. So I was just putting, well, I'd like to fix this one up. That's what I'm saying. I'd like to fix it up and bring it back as a house. It doesn't seem like it's that far back to that gone. There's a lot of, you know, there's everything on his list basically needs to be done, which is fine, you know. But uh, a time frame, I'd like to get through winter, maybe spring with a lot of this. Yeah, talk a little louder. Yeah, talk a little louder. You're, so you're planning, unless I'm mistaken, Jan, this, this is uh, owned by the county? Yeah, yeah. you've got a judgment of foreclosure on it now. Okay. Next week. So you're week. planning to go and purchase this from the county? Next. Yeah. Next auction. Okay. It's on the 20th. I guess other people can still bid on it if they go, but if you already demolish it, then I don't know why they would want to bid on it, but like, I seem to be anyone here, so I'm having to go, that was all. You could hold this one up and wait and see if he gets the property, come back, find out if he's going to buy whatever the amount is that you're going to require for posting of a bond. The administration there. would be fine with that, but we need to know right away whether or not you get it. You need to... I will. Yeah, know. I'll come and straight in there. If you do obtain the property, you may need to make an appointment with the building department right away yeah. and come up with a work plan. Yeah. Uh, and uh, again, this looks pretty bad, but you're I see you can do yeah. the work. I and we'd always rather save a house if we can. Yeah. So Mayor. Yeah. Yes. Mayor Parisi, uh, I would move that we refer this back to the administration. And uh, and have it reappeared for us next month on our agenda. Public discussion closed. Yeah, close points. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for coming. What's that mean? I come by next month. Well, well, you got to go buy it. It's up to you now to buy it. And if you buy it, then you can contact the building department. And let us know that you purchased it, and then we'll begin working with you so that we can bring this back and let them know at next month's meeting what's happened with respect to that property. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mayor Parisi, on this property, uh, the exterior looks good uh, from the street, and it appears occupied. I mean, there's a barbecue in the backyard, some children's <laughs> toys in the backyard. Sometimes there can be people that have either stayed in it or, or squatters. Pardon? Yes. Okay, then those items I just described, don't, those. you don't know to whom they belong. There is no barbecue there, there's nothing really there. Might be a different address, sir, I'm not sure. Well, it said 1106 on the front. Mm -hmm. I mean 1116 no, on the, one, one, let, I mean 1116 on the front. Uh, Mr. Keaton, did you go by that one? Yes, but I, I didn't go in the backyard. Or no. Okay. no, we don't go the backyard. The house is kind of set back. Recall. Oh, this okay. is not this is not the one on the corner, was it? Oh, uh, there's another one that sits back off the road. You kind of see it in the trees. It's around the corner. It's a corner house. It's a corner house. Yeah, yeah the driveway is uh, off of Russell, I think. You got the breezeway. Yeah. Well, okay. It might be there now. We'll check it out we'll, tomorrow. We'll find All right. Still gotta Would uh, move that we refer this back to the administration? Yes. Please. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> Number 523041 Davey. Anybody representing 23041 Davey? Anybody representing? Have a does anyone wish to speak on this property? Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor. Yes. The uh, administration recommends uh, following the hear following the hearing officer's order to uh, <coughs> demolish the structure within 21 days. Mayor, I'd like to make the motion that we uh, demolish the structure at 23041 Davy. Support. Then 21 days. Uh, Madam Mayor, I have a question. Yeah. 
or a statement. Uh, I went by there today. I talked to one of the neighbors. She said somebody has been working in there. So we might want to send somebody out there and let them know they might not want to be there when we demolish it. That would be a good idea. Well, the property was purchased from Oakland County for $95 after all. 95 $95. Right. Well, I think it's been through the Oakland County process a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And every time a contractor buys it, they get in there and they decide it's too much work. Right. Yeah. The house is sunk about a foot and a half in the ground. There's a huge amount of concrete in front of what probably should be described or could be described as a garage, but it's all uh, deteriorated too. That should, that would be gone if the building is demolished, correct? Correct. Yeah. We'll have to take it to grade, demolish everything, right. and uh, uh, regrade the uh, ground there. Right. Okay. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion here. Communication some department heads. Anyone, anyone speak? Go ahead, Chris. Chris, Chris is going to go first. Mike Webb wanted him to explain why. He had a question as to why the sewer rates were higher than the water rates, and in most of our neighboring communities, in fact, almost all the neighboring communities, the sewer rates are higher than the water. And I think most people know that. I just want to, Chris to come up here and give an explanation because I've had a lot of people ask me the same question. And just give an explanation of how do we come up with the sewer rates. The sewer rates are based, our sewer rates are based on uh, our meter readings. What we use per month is reported to Oakland County. And then the rates are based on uh, Detroit and Oakland County together because uh, we pay Oakland County for our sewage treatment. Okay. And basically, sewage is always going to be more than uh, the treatment of water because when they discharge the water after it's treated, it has to meet a level with the EPA and the DEQ to be able to be discharged back into the rivers, lakes, and streams. When they pull it in to treat it, it's already clean and good, so th the treatment of the water is going to go up, but not as much as the sewage because there's a lot of industrial chemicals, household waste, Pharmaceuticals are in the water, and that's why the cost of treatment has went up so much. And then we also have the George W. Coon, you know, that's all played into that with the big drain up there in 12 miles. So, okay. I just wanted it out there in the public because I've had several residents ask me the same question. I've given them an explanation. You've been on Facebook, I believe, on the Hazel Parks page, and given an explanation. I just wanted it to be in the public air so everyone has a better understanding. Thank you. Yep. And to add on to that, if you don't pay that cost and treat it right, you end up like my hometown of Flint, Michigan, where there's lead in the water and <laughs> an environment. We don't want to be Flint. <laughs> an environmental crisis. Uh, uh, I just wanted to briefly comment on uh, the business happenings of Hazel Park, which everyone has been aware of, uh, specifically Mabel Gray, which has been open uh, for two weeks as of today. Uh, their business projections, or their sales have been higher than their projections for the first two weeks, which is terrific. Um, in addition, uh, Sellermans is opening this Friday, or Saturday, uh, which is great. Um, we're looking at another eatery. Uh, the final plans for the Save-A-Lot on 8 Mile and DeQuinder is coming along, and Ed already spoke to, uh, about Ashley Capital. And the one we didn't mention is the, the hardware store pretty close to 8 Mile that's going to be Hardware Studio now, uh, mm -hmm. which is a terrific thing. Um, I also wanted to briefly mention Lancure is selling a house tomorrow on East Hayes, which I know that uh, Beth Holland has been in, um, and it's, I don't know, Ed, was, was the city manager was in there as well. It's a beautiful house. We're selling it for $95,000 uh, tomorrow, which is one of the highest prices south of nine miles since uh, the Great Recession. We have three more closings hopefully happening in no, uh, November in this month. Um, the price per square foot, in part because of this program and in part because of the economic turnaround, has gone from $44 per square foot to $70 to $75 per square foot. So the program is working, the economy is turning around, these are all good things. And one more thing about the businesses. Um, the businesses that are coming in, the businesses that are now calling us, uh, their remarks 
Um, Chef Regato's remarks in the, the paper have been that the city is great to work with, as has Sellerman said the same thing. It's been a pleasure working with the city. The other thing that they've really said is how much they really like the people of Hazel Park, the residents. And that is a testament to the residents and the great people that, that we're all here to serve and that, you know, we as the administration, I speak for a lot of department heads, work so hard for, as does the council. And I think as Ed was talking about a plan, the plan is coming to fruition and we're seeing positive things. Um, and we know there's more work to do and we're gonna try and make the best smart decisions as the team that we are, that includes the administration, the council and the residents. And, and thank you, Jeff. And, and I wanna compliment you for your outstanding work and, and what a great uh, helper that you've been to me with respect to bringing uh, these projects to fruition. I wanna thank you. Uh, could you share with the residents a little bit about what's happening with code enforcement? I mean, our judges had to add four extra court days this month to keep up with the number of code enforcement citations that we have issued in this community. So if you see something, perhaps we have already addressed it, but it hasn't gone to court yet. I would like to think that every resident is, or every business owner or every property owner is smart enough that when they get the notice from our code enforcement officers that they will comply with the notice and fix the problem. Sometimes they do not. And uh, when they do not, we have to write a ticket. Sometimes we have to write more than one ticket. Sometimes we have to arrest them. Sometimes we need to seek injunctive relief through the court system. So we're in the process of doing that. We've issued so many this summer that, like I said, four extra days. Just yes. for just, just for, code just for building else. code violations, nothing else. It, so four extra days. It has been a, 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 an effort of a, a good and somewhat new team that we've had. And in addition, I really need to compliment uh, Serene Papakian and the John R. Task Force. I think the fact. You stole my next thing. The, I, I, the, 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 the fact <laughs> that we are getting new businesses, but not, mm -hmm. you know. We've put an effort in, and you've seen all the new paint uh, along John R., especially south of Nine Mile. Um, Game Day Detroit has repainted. Uh, the, the business district is starting to look better, particularly on John R., and we plan on moving that to Nine Mile, to Quinder, so on and so forth. Um, and we have, uh, thanks to the city attorney, sought injunctive relief on those properties that were habitual problem causers. And we've got we got some of those injunctions just as two as recently or three as recently as a week and a half ago. Yeah. yeah. We also had the signs going up that Mike Webb has constantly been and <laughs> talking about and wanting, and the businesses are putting the signs up there, ordering them. It's great. And it don't have to be a phone number or nothing on it. I just want if we're doing commerce in this town, it should be a sign in the building that you're there working in that building, whether you have an internet business in that building going on or not. Uh, and lastly, uh, there is an, uh, an open house um, for the One Stop Ready communities, which we are a part of, um, where we're going to be marketing a few properties uh, that we select um, to put out there and hopefully get some other potential business owners interested in those properties. Um, but I'm fielding calls um, that now that aren't just auto shop related, which is really exactly. refreshing. <laughs> Madam Mayor. Yes. The dress, Jeff. Uh, you'll be receiving another call, I'm sure. We were out looking at uh, the houses on the list today, and Tom and I stopped at Lincoln Heat Treat, the building, the big building between Bernard and uh, Elza. Yeah. There were some people looking at it, and he's looking for some property in Hazel Park. Uh, we gave him our cards, but we gave him your name and number, so he will be calling you. Yeah, uh, that that property may be a little big for him, uh, but he's looking for something, and uh, he's really interested in coming to Hazel Park. So, you know, uh, we try to find the perfect fit, or you know, a great fit for the person, as long as they're a great fit for the community, and that's really what we're trying to do is find, you know. Uh, something that fits us and not just fill buildings right. with whatever, with, with, right. with auto shops, with more storage. We're really looking for entrepreneurs. Um, and again, we will announce a great technical company once they give us the go ahead to finally say that they're open, but it's gonna be an amazing company. Um, there are really good things happening in the city. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. Hey. Nice to meet you. Um, I am the manager of the ice arena, and I just wanted to come up here and say a couple of facts, and I know all of you know it. Um, during political times or elections, people always want to pick on the weakest link, and they always go to the ice arena. We all know it's been a money pit ever since we've had it. But did council, did city managers, city attorney, did myself sit down with business owners? We've gone over several things. People want to purchase it, thinking it's going to be easy. They'll make some money. And when they find out what the city's actually dealing with, they don't want nothing to do with it. We've sat down with one of the head people in the surrounding areas that manage ice arenas, they can't manage it. Yeah, yeah. if I could, if I could sure. interrupt you. Sharon and I, we went and we met with Tom Anastas from Suburban. Mm -hmm. He is the top ice arena manager in the state. He wanted to take a look at our operations. He looked at how efficiently we run that arena. He said, I can't run it for that. He said, I cannot do any better running that arena than you can run that arena. So. Uh, you know, and again, I want to compliment Mrs. Pinch, and she's taking it over there. Our revenues were up a hundred thousand dollars over last year, just last year alone. And they keep going year. up. We have to turn away people because we do not have enough ice. I would love someone to come in here and offer to build two more ice arenas or ice sheets, ice is what I want to say, we can sell them. We can pack them in. We do not have enough ice for contracted ice at all. We're more involved now with the schools, PTAs, we do fundraisers, um, and that was never done. Um, but to hear people make remarks, I have the best employees I could ever have over there. They work their butts off. I work 11, 12 hours. I work 10 and a half hours today before coming here. They do not complain. They do not get paid great money. But they're hard workers and they're dependable and they care about this city and they care about that rink. And I will not let anyone talk bad about them. They are Madam, hard workers. Madam Mayor. Yes. Comment. I, I think uh, one of the misconceptions that people have is um, uh, like you said, they complain about the managing of the ice arena. And, and as you just said, you could manage the ice arena, as I think we do, to its utmost. That's not the problem. Mm -hmm. No. The problem is what it costs to build and the fact that it's bonded. Exactly. We have no control over that at this point. We didn't build the ice arena. We didn't sell the bonds. But we have to live with that legacy. And we're doing everything we can to defray those costs. We're still coming up short. And we will come up short until those bonds are paid off. You just cannot do any better than is being done over we there. We really are closing the gap, though. Yeah. We really are getting close to break even. And that's something that I want everybody to understand, too, because there's been some discussions in the community about, well, let's repurpose the ice arena. You cannot repurpose the ice yeah. arena. Let me tell it from the mountain. You cannot repurpose the ice arena. Anyone who says that you can do that is, uh, is full of it up to their eyeballs, okay? Because there are municipal bonds and there are provisions in those bond agreements that make those bonds callable if you repurpose that arena. You have to pay them all off, and then you still don't have the money to even repurpose the ice Did, arena. Yeah, how are you going to repurpose the arena? And what Mrs. Pinch said is true. Uh, you, we could actually sell more ice if we had more ice available. Absolutely. Almost all of our prime time ice has been uh, sold, and it's been sold at market rate prices. And we are, we are closing that gap. It was also said, well, why don't we just shut it down? If you just shut it down, your, your losses there would go from, you know, uh, 100000 plus to six or $700,000 in bonds, plus the arena would be decaying. So it would be a huge money loser uh, for our residents if we just shut the doors. You can't just put up a disco ball, okay, and, uh, <laughs> you know, have some dances, and it's going to generate the kind of revenue that we generate when 
we sell ice. And that's okay. the reason why we could never sell it. Right. Because of that. Because people thought they could walk in, give us a check, and they'd make money. And when they did the financials, they just couldn't. Well, Sharon's also responsible. She got the liquor license. Sure. So she sells beer and wine there, which makes more money. That wasn't done before. She's done a lot of innovative right. things. They were, they were bringing in their own beer. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, if you're going to drink in our arena, we might as well sell you the beer. And that's been, you know, that's it's been, been a good moneymaker for us, for the adult leagues. So, uh, again, we tried to be innovative there. And I want to compliment her on the outstanding work that she has done to sell more ice time, to bring more tournaments to that arena, and also, most important of all, to engage our community with the arena. I saw our brand new superintendent here someplace, right Dr. Koopy, before. Where, uh, <laughs> hello. Uh, good welcome to Hazel Park. She's a breath of fresh air. I told her we want to invite every class and every school in the city of Hazel Park <laughs> over to the arena to skate for free. We will provide them the ice. We will provide them the skates because this arena is the community's property. But it's an ice arena. Mm -hmm. It's not a dance hall. It's not a soccer stadium. It's, it's not a concert venue. It's an ice arena and nothing else because we have looked at everything else don't you think that was one of the first things that i did for the record that ice arena made me city manager okay i was fired and jan drum has seen the letter and uh mike webb was on council and annie the cure was on council and i was fired because i opened my mouth about how that ice arena was uh hemorrhaging uh, was hemorrhaging money how it was built on a no-bid contract and what a mess that it was and i was fired and my uh, seat mate here, Arnie Schiffman, was also fired, uh, and uh, miraculously, by a, a change in uh, one vote, we both survived, and the rest is history. But uh, no one on this council <laughs> brought that arena to Hazel Park. So, thank and you. And I sure. think one of our uh, biggest turnout is lighting ceremony. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have over 400 people on that night just coming in there of residents. It, it's great. So, I just Kind of took a little bit of offense because you know that is my baby and i work hard for it and so do all my employees and if someone wants to run that on a ticket they need to know the background on it so i thank exactly. all of you yeah, and you. good luck yes. and thank you good night. Yeah. thank, thank you. you very much Arnie did want me to remind everybody that the bonds will be paid off in 2024. And that seems like a long time, but I remember 1999 when 2024 was 25 years away. And uh, as we get closer to break even on that, and we make the pain a little less and a little smaller, I want everybody to know that after those bonds are paid off, all of a sudden that ice arena will be nearly a million dollar swing. Okay, that will go from Net something profit. that's been a burden to a profit center for the city of Hazel Park. So as we look down the road to the future of this community, we can see that that is yet one more revenue producer that we will have as a hedge against the hard times in the future. So thank you. Much. Actually, I just wanted to really quickly announce that um, on Friday, October 30th at noon, we'll actually be uh, renaming the DPW complex in honor of former Mayor Jack Lloyd. Um, cousins will be looking great, and we'll have a new sign to, uh, to unveil for that. So I would encourage everyone to attend. That'll be at noon on uh, Friday the 30th. At noon on Friday the 30th, the Hazel Park Public Works Building becomes the Mayor Jack F. Lloyd Public Works Building. Jack, thank you for your many years of service. Thank you. department heads that want to speak? Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> county update with Elaine Zach. You were so small up there. <laughs> Good to see your department heads a chance. Hello, Elaine Zach, your Oakland County Commissioner. It's nice to be here. Forgive me for being late, but I had another event earlier. Um, in any case, I want to talk about a couple of things going on in Oakland County. So we approved a budget last month, and for my first time in 13 years, I was ready to vote no on the Oakland County budget. 
and we were able to negotiate something that morning. And I'm pleased to tell you that <coughs> Oakland County has agreed to put another couple million dollars towards roads in Oakland County to contribute to fixing roads. But more importantly, we are going to create a committee that's going to look at how we allocate tri-party funding in Oakland County. And I've studied the issue. Tri-party funding is this pocket of money where the Road Commission puts in X amount of dollars, the local city puts in X amount of dollars, and the county matches it. And unfortunately, on the south end of the county, we don't have many Oakland County roads. And so we really get the short end of the stick, once again, in how this is created. So what we're asking for is to look at reallocating these, you know, this two million and other funding so that we can use it on local roads, so that we can do maintenance rather than rebuilding, because the numbers clearly show if you can fix potholes, you know, you can sustain the road, and also to consider population in the formula. We have a lot more people Mm -hmm. a lot more local roads here, and so to be continued. So we did get an agreement to have this committee to helpfully reallocate. So this good. was a major score, you know, yes, as yes. far as hopefully. And we have um, bipartisan support saying we really need to do more in Oakland County for our roads. We're not trying to replace the state. But if there's some surplus money in the county, and there is, then we ought to be investing in fixing our roads. So um, I hope that we can continue looking at this more thoroughly. Um, I do want to let people know one of the things that we all pay for is that we have a millage to the Detroit Institute of Arts on our tax bill. And we, you know, I did put it on the ballot before you and people did vote for it. And part of the deal of having this millage is to make it our community art museum. So Saturday, October 24th is Oakland County DIA Day, which means that they're offering free transportation if people need it. And if you want to access, you can go to um, tickets.dia.org or 313-833-4005. You can call and say, I need transportation. So I hope that people will take advantage of that. And as an Oakland County resident, it is free entry. You know, it's a cultural jewel, and we want to take advantage of our cultural jewels. Um, along with roads, I've been working on trying to spread the word on Regional Transit Authority. You're going to keep hearing from me. Again, there was legislation passed in the state of Michigan talking that created this Regional Transit Authority. And we have two Oakland County appointees. There's this group, just like we have the Great Lakes Water Authority, that um, oversees the federal transportation money that is coming into our area. And before, it used to be that the Detroit system would get funding, Oakland County would get funding. Now we have a regional organization working on distributing funding. They are charged to make our suburban system smart and our Detroit system work seamlessly together. So that there's a lot of challenges there. And more importantly, they're working on a regional transportation plan, a blueprint of how we can have true regional transportation systems. And we're not looking, we can't afford to build subways. Um, the mode of transportation would be rapid bus transportation along some main arteries and then feeding in with smart and other alternatives. So you're going to hear me talk about this continuously. There are more listening sessions. If you go to www.rta.org, 
Um, they are conducting some more listening sessions. They want to hear from people as they're creating this plan. It's our plan. And the more people that chime in what they think or don't think, the better. And hopefully we'll see the draft of the plan in November and, you know, with some, you know, proposed funding mechanisms and we're supposed to be taking a vote on the plan on the option of funding November 2016. And I'm told we're still on target. So it's a really, I think it's a very important issue, transformational issue for the metropolitan Detroit to have a, a transportation system that works. So to be continued. Thank you. Thank you. You're bringing Thank you. more good news too. Yeah. You're doing good news too. <laughs> Thank you. Trying. Oh, one more thing. I did have a press conference today um, for commissioners. We introduced a package of bills on time to care initiative. And it was covered in the Oakland Press and Michigan Radio. And what this is, and the resolution in my name, is requiring the county to offer sick leave benefits to part-time employees. And we have 1,090 part-time employees. And what we're asking, there's a package of bills that's been introduced in the state. And we are trying to model the best practice in Oakland County and say to our employees that you can earn sick one hour of sick leave for every 30 hours that you work so that should you have a sick child or you have a, an aging parent or you're sick, you don't have to come and spread germs in the workplace. So I think it's an important, very pro-family, pro-employee, pro-community package of time to care initiative. So it's going to go through the committee process and we'll see what happens. All right. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. A, a question. Sure. On the, uh, the DIA shuttling, do you have uh, the hours for that? I don't know. And, and it's really, you know, I've been told to promote it and say that so you want they, they it. So I don't know how they they're doing it. The, all right. I Thank wish you. I, you know, they couldn't Thanks. tell me that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, I had an opportunity yesterday to go to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and address uh, as a guest lecturer the graduate class in municipal finance. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk to those students and hopefully give them some information about municipal finance in the real world. And I had a class of about 50 students of various ages. Again, it's a master's level class. And uh, they were very bright and asked some outstanding questions. But they were absolutely amazed that we were able to weather the storm that we weathered during the Great Recession. The city of Hazel Park was hit harder than any other community in the metro Detroit area we suffered the most losses. And again, that was a result of the fact that right before the crash, we had a run up in our values. People paid a little too much for houses, and when the bottom fell out, they simply walked away, leaving us with the highest foreclosure rate in the area. Well, one of the slides that I showed them is one of the slides that I am absolutely most proud of. And that slide is called Taxable Value Per Capita in Metro Detroit. And as you can see from this particular slide, in the Metro Detroit area, the city of Hazel Park has the second lowest per capita taxable value of any community. We have a lower taxable value per capita than the city of Detroit. We have a lower taxable value per capita than the city of Highland Park. Only the city of Hamtramck has a lower taxable value per capita than we do. All of the other communities with similar taxable value per capita were under state control of some form, whether it was an emergency manager, an EFM, uh, uh, consent agreement, uh, or some other form of state oversight. The only one that was free of state oversight and remained master of its own destiny was the city of Hazel Park. And that, yes, go ahead and clap. <laughs> the 
because this really truly was a team effort. And this was a team effort, and the most important part of that team was our residents who came through, and they passed the millages that we needed to survive. My employee unions, they came to the table and they worked with me every single time. I've been city manager of this city for more than 13 years, and you know what? I have never had an Act 12 arbitration with my police officers and my firefighters. That means we've always worked it out. And I'm very proud of that, and that shows that it is truly a spirit of cooperation that has pulled the city of Hazel Park through these tough financial times. We created SMORSA, and that was the South Macomb Open Regional Services Authority. That's what enabled us to find a mechanism to let me those mills to save our fire department. No one else has done that in the state of Michigan. That's one of the main reasons why the University of Michigan invited me. We came up with that. That's the city of Hazel Park leading the way in finding solutions to Michigan's broken and this defining problem. I am so proud of this community. I'm so proud of our residents. I am so proud of the employees and the team that I work with here uh, for what we've been able to accomplish in this city. And now, as we look toward the future, the future of the city of Hazel Park is bright beyond my wildest dreams. We have Mabel Gray, we have Solomon's, we have Studio 238, we have Hardware Studio coming in now. Uh, we've got the biggest redevelopment project in Oakland County this year uh, that we're gonna be bringing to the DDA and the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority this week. This is what's happening in your city. Is Hazel Park perfect? No, Hazel Park isn't perfect. But if you've got a problem or a question or a concern, I encourage you to call me with those problems, questions, or concerns. If you have an issue that needs to be addressed, that city related, please contact me directly. Okay, we can move very quickly to help you if you only let us know. I try to monitor social media and I try to uh, uh, find out about what's happening in the community, but we can't catch everything. If you please uh, just uh, let us know we will be happy to help you. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, I want to recognize Dr. Amy Kruthi, who is here. Uh, I had a meeting with her uh, last week, and I see our school district in this community uh, turning around. Would you like to say something, Dr. Kruthi? I could yield the floor to you if you'd like to say just a minute. Please stand, though. Right. Please stand so you can be recognized. Again, another example of our community weathering, uh, weathering storms, not of our own creation. Michigan's system of municipal finance is fundamentally broken. A system of school financing is also <laughs> fundamentally broken. So we wish her well in her endeavors there, and we stand ready to be a partner with her to rebuild that district. But on to the good news again. Uh, if you've got an issue or problem, contact me. Again, this is the silly season. So I hear rumors and I you know, hear these whispers and I, I ignore a lot of that nonsense. And I urge you to ignore that kind of faceless, nameless, falsified nonsense as well. If you want the truth, call me. I can't post every shred of information I don't know. Uh, I, we put the budgets up, we put the financials up, whatever you want, if people call us, we give it to you. Call me and ask me, I will meet with anybody. We have town meetings and I stand for an entire room of people and I say, does anyone have a question that I can answer? All I ask is that you ask me the question. I'll be happy to provide you with any answers to any questions that you have. Just ask. I want to thank, it's the end of another council term, and I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, I serve at your pleasure. It has been my distinct honor and privilege to serve under your leadership. Uh, it's a thankless job that you have. You don't make a lot of money being a council person. You're basically a volunteer. Anybody who thinks that uh, you guys are well paid need to look at the fact that you make uh, peanuts for uh, your service to this community. And uh, I just want to uh, let you know uh, that it has been, uh, again, my, my, my honor to serve on you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as always, I will answer any questions that you have. <laughs> oh, what about the transparency? Like I said, <laughs> uh, again, you know, I, I want to get it and let it. What 
Die. What do you, what, what can I tell you? What question do you want me to answer? Okay? Yeah. Again, transparency is the law. Okay? You can't hide anything. Everything that we do is subject to public scrutiny. Okay? I mean, could our website be fancier? I guess. But remember, we're coming out of the biggest financial crisis in the city's history. We had to pass two millages, and our future was in doubt until those millages were passed. Okay, we've been concentrating uh, on other things than a fancy website, but again, if people want information, we can post that information. Someone said, well, you know, is somehow the water bill uh, subsidizing the ice arena losses? No, that's utter nonsense, okay? Uh, again, but these are the types of rumors that we have to address. I've offered an accounting to anybody. I have a finance director, Alicia Christensen. We hire Plant Moran to be our city's finance director. As certified public accountants, Plant Moran is bound by certain ethical standards related to their licensure. We're hiding nothing, okay? What a bunch of nonsense. Uh, please, we're ready to answer any question that anybody has about any aspect of uh, local government. It's the people's money. What do you want to know? Thank you. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Ms. Drum? Thank you. Um, some of the things that you haven't seen, or you may have seen, that you guys forget about that you've initiated and, and had us do over the years. That, okay, you don't go out there and start patting yourself on the back. But things such as putting LED lights out throughout the city to save money. Things like the sidewalk replacement program, you know, came into being with you guys. Not before. They've been, they've been in disrepair for years and years. You guys have spearheaded these types of programs. We've had restitution and insurance claims for anybody who hits the light poles or damages any city property. We are going after the insurance companies and are recouping these losses now so that these taxpayers do not have to pay these. These are all through you guys. They weren't in before, these, these memes that we are doing. Um, the parks, the recreation department, okay, it is it's flourishing under Serene's you know, leadership out there. Why? Because you guys wanted it. You gave us direction, we followed it. We followed your ideas. Same with the South John Air Task Force. <clears throat> exactly. Set, There's, made it happen. I mean, if you sat down and went through every single day of what you called up here and told them, I want this done, and we had to hear in staff meetings, it was over and over and over. There's been so many things. Um, it's like every time you turn around, there's another project that we're, you know, we're directed to go in and seek out and, and find a way to do it and to save some money doing it. Um, yeah, has it been a lot of work? Yeah, it has. Has Sharon Pinch, you know, put in a hundred hours in a week? Yeah, she has, where she slept there at night because it was so much work she had to do with the flooding and, and the roof leaking or something like that. She took care of it. But that's because... <coughs> You guys give us the ammunition and the ideas and the power to be able to do these things. And yeah, we're proud of it. We are. We work hard. Ed will tell you, he squeezes that nickel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does. You know, are we underpaid? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We couldn't work for greater people. We really couldn't. It's, it's been a pleasure. It really has. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's why we're all here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schiffman? If I did speak, it would really be kudos to the residents of the Hazel Park. Mm -hmm. I give each of you kudos because your friends work hard, you take action, you are led by good administration, and the <laughs> city runs well. But nobody on this earth could ever believe the city of Hazel Park would pass two millages in the economy that existed nationally, existed in the state of Michigan, existed in this area. So I sit here for 20 some odd years and there hasn't been a day that I'm not amazed by the residents. 
that they can clearly understand what's in their best interests and they don't want state people connecting them to the Flint water system. They want truly local government. So though you deserve all the kudos, and I think Jeff mentioned it, the real kudos are the very nature of the people that live in this city. They are, each and every one is amazing. If there was anybody that would want to hang themselves from the tree with what went on over these past years, you would think it would be the city pays apart. And yet, everybody comes and is optimistic. And as I say, 10, 20 years from now, when I'm here, I'll still be preaching the same optimistic <laughs> view of what I see now. So I think you're all in good shape. That's a lucky for you. Uh, okay, Mayor and Councilman, but Mr. Lucero. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I wanted to th say thanks to, again, our staff for searching out ways to, this is particularly about Chris Duberg, uh, a great deal on used equipment. We've done it over again. Um, I'm just amazed that you find these deals and they're out there and we are able to take advantage of them. And that's what we do, uh, finding different ways to make ends meet. Thank you to uh, Peggy, Kurt, Tim, and Beth for those kinds of words of support. Um, did anybody get out? I w there was an unveiling last night of the art piece at the Art Garden. It's down by the Dairy Park. I want everybody to come out and see the new piece of art that's out there. We're very excited about that. Um, and to, uh, to all the voters, get out and vote November 3rd on Tuesday. Thank you. Councilman Webb. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks for coming out this evening. I see we have a big audience, and it's been nice to talk to everyone today. I'd also like to mention our, all of our employees, not just our administrators, but our administrators work very hard, but without the supporting cast to those administrators, we wouldn't have the thriving community that we have. We have a lot of volunteers as well that step up to the plate when we need it. With our administration giving us the ammunition to move forward, it's all about commitment. Every one of us here have a commitment to our community. One way, either big or small, we commit a piece of us to making the survival of Hazel Park true. And that is called energy. And that's why we're moving forward after the big challenges in the last few years with the acceptance of the millages being passed. That's the energy. We're going to move positive for the future, progressive. Keep changing and going forward, making it positive, keeping the energy going, getting some new innovative ideas, different buildings are, are renovating and new buildings are coming in. I'm excited. This has been really a long time coming for this community and all of us as residents. I am so excited. I, I just, I bought a business, a building here 10 years ago and in a bad time. I wanted, I was excited to do it. I always want to be my own boss. And now that you see and talk to residents, you feel that energy and it's been wonderful. And you, and I see it more and more in the last couple of years with the marketing strategies that's been put in place. All of us have had input in, in one way or another. We're all, we won't, we all disagree to disagree up here, but we're all colleagues in, in the goal of the future of this community. That is what we're about. And commitment is from everyone here and everyone out there. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Um, Councilman Salmon. Thank you, Mayor Preecy. Uh, I, I like to sum up uh, all of the remarks this evening that were so positive. You heard of Boston Strong. We are Hazel Park together. <laughs> Um, I, uh, last week, completed the third presentation uh, by the Oakland County Development and Planning Department uh, called One Stop Ready, and it was to encourage communities to get their ducks in a row and make it easier for someone walking in wanting to remodel a home, build a home, remodel a business, in 
few cases here in Hazel Park build a business, but uh, it was very, very informative, and I was pleased to be joined by uh, Rich Robbins, Chuck Gladue, Tim Wright, Beth Holland, and Jeff Campbell, and it was an honor representing Hazel Park, and they were surprised to see that we had so many people show up for these sessions. Uh, the four people besides Jeff Campbell that I mentioned are all community activists and on boards and commissions and uh, donate their time to many other areas in town besides just those uh, endeavors. Um, I uh, did make it to the uh, art unveiling that uh, was mentioned and uh, at our art park that I would call <laughs> number one. Uh, I encourage everyone to go look at this unique piece of art that this man has created who is a, a Hazel Park businessman who loves the city and he's very talented. I'm really interested to see what it looks like with snow on it in the winter. I know we're not in a hurry for that. But <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I surely appreciate seeing a lot of faces out there tonight besides city employees. It's really good to see folks. And I have one more thing that I would like to mention, and that is uh, within the next year or so, uh, it's quite likely that Hazel Park residents will be approached to support financially uh, our city library. It is a, an essential part of our city. It is vital that we have a, a library that has what it needs to serve the people and the patrons of the library. So uh, keep that in mind and don't be surprised and, and uh, be supportive to that, that part of our city as well. Uh, I thank you, Mayor Preci, for your, uh, your collegium <laughs> and uh, as well, Mayor Pro Tem Keaton, Councilman LeCuro and Councilman Webb, uh, the confidence that they displayed by appointing uh, someone who is not just another pretty face uh, was, was really appreciated by me. And I like to end my comments by saying, if you love somebody, please tell them so. And if you have children, hug them and tell them you love them. Thank you. Here, here. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Mayor. I, I, first of all, I'd like to say something about uh, uh, art in the city of Hazel Park. Uh, we have an arts council, and we are developing. We've had the art fair. Uh, we've had a lot of programs that are developing the arts in Hazel Park, and I, I find that very exciting. Uh, uh, being an artist myself, or pretending to be an artist myself. <laughs> uh, and the reason I asked about the, uh, the timing on the shuttling to the DIA is that on that day, uh, Saturday, uh, October 24th, we are, the Arts Council has put together a thing called Arttober. And what that will consist of is a number of studios that are right here in, the, in Hazel Park that, that, that the people may not know exist. And between those studios, we will have art displayed in uh, different businesses or vacant buildings that we've contacted to have art displayed. And so you'll be able to walk this area or drive through this area 
and look at some of the art that comes out of Hazel Park. And it's going to be very interesting. And that's Saturday the 24th from 5 to 9. And the area will go from the Phoenix Cafe uh, by Tin Mile Road all the way down to Studio 238, uh, which is down by the Dairy Park and the Art Park and uh, over on Nine Mile. So that's going to be an exciting thing that's going to happen uh, this Saturday. The 24th, <laughs> not week this from. Saturday. <laughs> week from Saturday. Week from Saturday. Uh, personally, uh, this is the last council meeting of this council's tenure. Uh, it, this makes about 13 years that I've been on the council and about four years that I was mayor. But I've had the absolute pleasure and honor to serve the citizens of Hazel Park. I grew up in Hazel Park. Um, it's just my hometown. And I'd like to thank my family for putting up with me uh, throughout those times and my uh, coming home crabby and <laughs> mad at the county and mad at the state. And, um, and I'd like them to, to share in some of the things that are happening to Hazel Park now because you deserve it as much as the citizens of Hazel Park do. Uh, I would like to thank the city workers, uh, without whom uh, none of this would be possible. Uh, the uh, commitment that they've made to the city, the sacrifices they've made are unbelievable. I'm, I was a business agent, I'm a union man from way back, and some of the stuff that we've done, uh, I, I don't know how it happened, but it's the cooperation that we've had that's pulled us through this terrible, terrible time. I'd like to thank the administration. Uh, not only are they great administrators, but they are idea people, uh, they are visionaries, and they have pushed this city forward. We're Frankly, most people didn't think we stood a snowball's chance in Hades. It's a great, great place to live. Most of all, the citizens of Hazel Park. And it's amazing that the 20-some years ago when I was born, we <laughs> had a certain group of citizens here, and it's changed a lot since then. But somehow we've kept the kind of citizens that Arnie's talking about. The people who care, the people who think we're family. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing that the faces can change, but the mindset stays the same. It's still Hazel Park. It, maybe it's in the water. Not like Flint, better. <laughs> uh, It is important, as one of the persons said, that you vote. Uh, I know people say, oh, my vote doesn't count. That's not the case. Everybody's vote in Hazel Park counts. And you need to get out there and vote. That is your basic right, your basic obligation. So please get out there and vote. And for you who are watching us, we don't get to gauge how many people watch us. This might be a good experiment. All of you get out and vote, and we will see how many people watch us on television. Again, thank you all for coming out and participating in the democratic process. Thank you all up here for, for the support and the camaraderie that we have had, and I, I just appreciate it. It's been, thank one, you. It's been wonderful, Mr. Keaton. Thank you. Thank it's you. been wonderful. I'm unopposed and retired, so I, I, um, so I was able to knock on doors to help these guys right here, and we do work hard together, and that's what we did in this whole time. It's been our pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much for all this. And it's going to be good. Everything's great. So. Thank you. Oh, um, all right. I have.
three minutes. Three. I'm literally mean three minutes executive session for uh, the sale of property. So. Okay. <clears throat> Madam Chair, uh, Mayor? Yes. I would move that we enter to executive session for the sale of property. Start with a, I got discussion up for three minutes. For three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna see this one. <laughs> Again, thank you for coming out. Yes.